Brian here for Directus. In this video, I'm going to give you a full walkthrough of the Directus platform. First, I'll give you an overview of what Directus actually is, and then we'll dive into setting up the platform and starting some basic data modeling. After that, we'll cover adding, editing, and visualizing your content using the no code app. Then we'll finish by connecting to your data with our REST and GraphQL APIs. So let's get started. Your first question is probably just, what is Directus? Directus is the world's leading open data platform. So any modern web project is going to require storing, managing, connecting, searching, and visualizing data. Directus provides all of that. Think of Directus as your developer toolkit, giving you a suite of user-friendly yet powerful tools that enable you to build virtually any data-driven project. So no more wasted days spent writing APIs, fighting with authentication, implementing complex permissions logic, or building custom admin portals for clients or business users. Every Directus project is comprised of three layers. You need to store your data somewhere, so we start with any new or existing SQL database. You maintain complete control and authority over the schema, any content, and optimizations. Directus doesn't change or migrate your database. Unlike other platforms, your data stays clean and pure. So you avoid any vendor lock-in and you can always bypass our middleware with direct SQL queries. This is your data. And so technically it's not even part of Directus. Directus seamlessly layers on top of that SQL database, introspecting its architecture to provide you with instant, ready to go REST and GraphQL APIs. We call this our data engine, which is the second layer. The data engine includes a ton of powerful features in addition to the instant APIs, full CRUD operations, built-in authentication, rule-based access control, workflow automation, asset transformation, and much, much more. As a developer, wow, that sounds great. But what about our non-technical users? They aren't going to be fetching data with SQL or APIs, but they still need the same access to their data. That's where our third layer comes into play, the Data Studio. Data Studio is a beautiful and intuitive no-code app that enables all business users to browse, manage, and visualize data. More technical users can model all of your data, including complex relationships, using the intuitive interface without ever touching a single line of code. These three layers combine to give you everything you need to build powerful projects that truly scale. On to your next question. What kind of projects can I use Directus for? Well, a better question might be, what can't you use Directus for? But across all categories, some of the most common use cases for Directus include headless CMS for digital experiences and websites, building internal tools and business intelligence, native apps and games, SaaS applications, or even managing data from robotics, IoT devices, or other hardware. But those aren't the only use cases. Our amazing community of over 50,000 members keeps coming up with more interesting use cases for Directus every single day. So hop over to our Discord community to see what they're building and be sure to let our team know what you're working on too. Now is also a good time to quickly mention that Directus is 100% free and open source. There are no paywalls or artificial limitations. We believe in the true spirit of open source and we never gate any core features behind a paywall just for profit. All right, enough talking about Directus. Let's actually show you how easy to use and powerful Directus really is. You can self-host Directus if you'd like, since it's open source, but the quickest way to get started is through Directus Cloud. Just hop onto the Directus website and log in to the cloud dashboard through GitHub or your email address. Next, click create a project, give your project a name, and then choose from either Community Cloud, uh, which is great for proof of concept or demo projects, or the standard cloud when you're ready to go to production. 
uh, choose your node type and the number of reserved nodes, and then simply check out. Once you check out, your instance will spin up in no time at all, and then you are ready to log in. So let's go ahead and log in to our new instance. And we can see that we have a blank slate when we log in. There's no collections of data at all. Before we dive into data modeling, I want to go adjust our project settings and white label this for our company, our project, or our client. So I'll give this project a name, a description, add our project URL, and then we will go through and add our branding. So you can pick from project colors, add a logo to be shown in the uh, navigation bar, and add foreground and backgrounds that show on the login or public directus page. There's a lot of other project settings that you can tweak, and you can even include your own custom CSS, which allows you to theme the interface for the Directus Data Studio even further. So we're going to upload our public image, and then on the public note, this is just a short message that displays on the login page. Now, the next thing I wanna do is save our settings, and then I'm going to log out and show you guys what this actually looks like. I love how easy it is to white label the app and make everything look super professional. So this is what the login page looks like. Let's go ahead and log in and start some data modeling. So within the settings page, I'm gonna to go to our data model and we will create our first collection. Let's just call this our articles collection just some simple content that we wanna set up. For the primary key field, you've got several options. I'm gonna choose generated UUID, and then we'll move on to adding our optional system fields. These are customizable as well, so if I don't like the name of this field, I could just click into it and update it to whatever I'd like. Now we've got this collection ready, let's go ahead and save it, and we'll start adding some more fields to our collection. Any fields that we add here, Directus is going to mirror within our database for the articles table. It's super easy for any admin user to create fields. Let's add our first one, a title for our articles. So we'll just input title for the key. And I want to make this required so that users actually have to fill this out. Once we're done, we'll hit save. Directus also makes it super easy for me to create a great looking interface for our users that are gonna be managing content. So I can look for the three dots beside this field and open the drop down menu and I'll set this one to half width, but you could choose full width or fill width to fill the size of the screen. Next, let's create our second field, a slug. So as you can see, Directus has a nice wizard and a bunch of presets for quickly adding new fields. But in this case, I'm going to go to the advanced field creation mode because I want to enable a few more options. We can see the different sections on the left, schema, field, interface, display, validation, and conditions. So I'm gonna click over to the field section, which is where I can set this to be read only or required. Under the interface section, what I wanna do is check the Slugify option to make whatever value they enter URL safe. This is gonna remove any spaces, replace them with hyphens. The option that you select under display affects how this field shows up in the layouts, like the table layout or the cards layout. I'm just gonna choose raw value. For the slug field, I'll change that to half width as well. And we'll move on to our next field, which is gonna be content. Directus has a really nice WYSIWYG editor that you have complete control over. So if I scroll down to the toolbar field, I can adjust every single button or option that displays in my toolbar. So if I wanna give our users the option to add up to six levels of headers, I can. Now we'll go ahead and save this field and we're gonna add one last field, a relational field for the featured image. So I'll just scroll down under relational, pick the image preset, type in featured image and save. So now we've got our content ready to go. Let's scroll down and actually configure the collection just a little more. I can find a nice looking icon and choose a color just to keep things really tidy. 
I'm gonna save this and go back, and then I can also adjust the display template, which is gonna be the default way that this shows up in the layouts. So with all of that set, let's hit save and go back to our content section and create our first article. So under the articles collection, we'll just hit create and we'll start entering our content. We'll give it a title, a slug, set this to published, add some content and upload a featured image. That's a great looking rabbit. All right, so we'll save this article and now we are back to our table layout for the articles collection. But maybe I want to adjust how this is displayed. It's a simple drag and drop on the table layout to reorder columns. If I want to hide a certain field, I just click on the drop down and the bottom option is hide field. So I can hide this content field, hide our slug, and maybe I want to add that image just so I get a visual of what that post looks like. I'll scroll down. You can see we've got our date updated. Let's add that one. And let's also add our featured image, but wait, I don't want to see the ID of the image file. I want to see the actual image. So let's go back to our data model and under the featured image field, we're going to adjust the settings. So we'll go to display. And here I'm going to pick display a tiny image preview. So now if I back up, we could see that image. Maybe I want to make it larger, add more spacing. So I'll go to the layout options and choose the comfortable spacing option. That looks great. Depending on the type of data I'm looking at, I might reach for a different layout. You've got many different layouts in Directus, like the cards layout you see here or the map layout, the calendar layout, or if you're using the Directus Cloud, you've got access to the Kanban layout. So on each layout, you have control over what fields display and how each layout looks. Once you've got your layout configured, just how you want it with any filters or searches applied, try using the bookmark button to save this layout and allow other team members to quickly recall that layout with all of the save filters and options that you've set up. You can give it an icon and a custom color to easily separate it from your other layouts. Directus also includes some powerful features for your content like revisions. So I'm just going to open up this article. And on the right information sidebar, I'm going to toggle revisions that will expand and I can see any revisions for this article. Currently, there's only one when this item was created. Let's go ahead and make some changes to this content. Maybe we'll change up the title, add a little more content and use the save and stay option to stay right on this page as we save. Once I do that, you'll notice there are now two revisions that are visible. And when I click on the one that says updated for fields, it will open another drawer where I can see the updates that were made. I could see that the title and the content were changed as well as the user and the date this was updated. You can turn revision tracking on and off on a collection level basis. And it's super helpful because you can track an unlimited number of revisions. Under the revision preview, you could see what the item looked like after the update. And on the top right, beside the save item, I can revert the content to a specific revision. Another handy tool that's baked right into Directus is the ability to add comments to any item. So I can add any type of comment here for my team, including using a at mention to notify a specific member or user inside our project. Here, I'm just gonna drop a note to our CEO and co-founder, Ben, that this article is ready to review. He's gonna receive a notification inside the Data Studio and an email alerting him. Let's say I want to share this article with an outside collaborator, but I don't wanna give them access to our Directus project. This is where the share operation really shines. On the information sidebar, I will look for the shares option, and then I'll just click new share. I will give this a quick name. Let's just call it demo share. In this case, I will choose the role that this share will have access to. And then I can even add a password, a start and end date of when this is accessible or the number of times that anyone can access this. 
So it's super powerful, very flexible as well. And all I have to do is hit save. From there, I can go in and either send that link directly from Directus to a specific email. Or in this case, I'm just going to copy the link and open up a, another tab to show you what it looks like. So I'll just paste that in here and you can see now we get a read only view of this one article without exposing any other content in this collection. Now I'd like to show you more about the database mirroring that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Directus does not alter the structure of your SQL database. We simply mirror that within inside the data studio. So I'm going to open up table plus and connect to my SQL database for this project to show you what I mean. Let's just create a new connection here and voila, we're in. So if you look closely, you'll see that any tables that Directus has added to this database have been namespace under Directus and any of our underlying tables like articles have no Directus specific fields or content. And to demonstrate this database mirroring, I'm just going to edit the title of this article. Let's change it to my second article instead of my first article. I'll save that and then refresh our data studio. And you can see the changes are reflected instantly. So that's database mirroring. Now let's take a look at how the database mirroring works when you have an existing SQL database. I'm just gonna add a new table to this SQL database. I'm gonna call it metrics and add some columns to it. Directus introspects the database architecture, your schema, and brings that right into the data studio for you. So I'm going to create that table, save it, and now I'll refresh Directus. And we can see that that metrics table now shows up inside my data model, inside data studio. But it also says database only. So if I want to make this available where users can edit content directly inside data studio, all I have to do is click to configure this collection. And it's just like creating any other collection inside the data studio. You've got complete control over the interface, how users are inputting or managing that data. So inputs, dropdowns, uh, code boxes, values, any of that you've got complete control over. Once I configure this last field in my data model and I'm happy with where it's at, I can go in and add new metrics to this collection at any time. So I'll just switch over to content, create item, and boom, there's my form to add a new metric. When you're ready to share data with other users, check out the user directory. Directus makes it super simple to manage all the users inside your project, set up different roles, invite users via email so they can set up their own account, or you can also create users yourself just by going to the create item within the users directory. Add a first name, last name, email, and password, upload an avatar if you have it, and add the additional info if you want to track that and save. Boom, that user is now ready to log in to the data studio and any project that has users, you're going to need to control what data they have access to. So Directus has powerful rule-based access control built in, ready to go for you. Simply go to the roles and permissions underneath the settings and you'll find the two default roles. Public, which controls what API data is available without authentication, and the administrator role, which gives unrestricted API and app access. But you can always create your own roles and you're not limited to a certain number. Let's take a look at the public role. By default, all the permissions within the public role are turned off. This is for safety. You always want to be very careful about what data you give access to without authentication. So in this case, to test our articles, I'm going to enable the read operation for the articles collection. And I'm also going to give all access to the Directus files collection so that anybody who needs to look at the articles will also be able to see our featured image. So I just click that read operation, give all access, and then we'll hop back to our content. Let's access our articles using the REST based API. I'm just gonna copy the base URL here and I'm gonna open a new tab and add slash items slash articles. As you can see, the Directus Data Engine APIs are returning our content because we allowed the read permission for our public role. 
but you're not limited to a simple on or off. You can create custom permissions for each operation inside a particular role. So you can get very granular on the items that certain users are allowed to access, what fields they have access to, what operations can they perform. Uh, and you can even use this to set up things like tenancy or restricting certain users from accessing certain data. On any web-based project, you're gonna need to manage files and Directus has you covered with the file library. A super easy, super quick way to manage all of your images and other assets that you've uploaded to your project. You can create as many different folders, nest them as deep as you'd like, bulk update, delete, edit, move any of those assets to the correct folder. And just like the other modules inside Directus, you can customize how this looks and feels. So I can update the size of each card. I can set the layout to a table view if I prefer that over the cards view. I can change the title field or the subtitle field for the cards or any other options you can dream of. You also have detailed search and filter capabilities. But one of the coolest features is what I'm gonna show you now is the ability to transform your images inside Directus. So you can edit images right through the data studio. I can flip horizontally, change the aspect ratio, even crop images without touching Photoshop or Adobe. Now, one of the other nice things is Directus Data Engine will do asset transformation for you. So I'm just going to open up this image using the API. This is a pretty large image and it's probably going to be very small on the front end of our website. So I can add a query string here for width and height and fit to automatically transform this image on the fly. Directus does all this for me and I can even set up presets within the Data Studio so that it makes it much easier to transform those assets on the front end of your website. Your users are probably also going to want to visualize your data. So that's where the insights module comes in. This allows you to take all the data inside your Directus project, your SQL database, and create user-friendly dashboards without writing a single line of code. You can even expand the dashboard to fill the screen, which would look great on a TV on the wall in your office. Instead of spending hours coding or spinning up some separate tool, anybody on our team can go in and drag and drop these different panels to create a great looking dashboard. And adding new panels is very simple. I just pick a collection, the field that we want to use for the value, apply any filters, add labels and abbreviations. And you have multiple panel types like label, list, metric, a time series chart, and global variables, which allow you to set up date ranges or other options to include to filter your insights. On to one of the tools that gets a lot of Directus community members excited, Directus Flows. Flows allows you to automate simple tasks or even complex processes within your project. It's like having Zapier or Make right inside your project. Each flow consists of a trigger, what kicks off that particular flow, and one or more operations, which could be anything from sending a webhook to a third-party app, sending emails, reading and writing data to different collections inside your project, and you can even run JavaScript functions within a flow. Let's show you how easy it is to create a new flow. I want to set up a notification whenever a new article is created. So I'll simply give this a name and then we'll choose our trigger. I'll pick the event hook. We will use the non-blocking action and the scope will be whenever items are created. The collection we want to trigger on is articles. So whenever this resolves, we will send an email. So I just pick send email from our operations list, type in the email that I want to send this to. How many times have you had to actually write these email notifications in code? Let's simplify the process. We'll add our subject line 
and then we can simply add a body to the email. You can also use dynamic variables to pass data from the other operations or trigger inside your email. So now that we've created that and enabled the flow, let's just go in and create a published article inside this account and choose a quick featured image and save this and we should receive an email notification. Let me pull up my email and as you can see, boom, now we've got the email right inside my inbox. And to close out this demo of Directus, let's talk about how to fetch content using our data engine APIs. Directus will auto-generate REST and GraphQL APIs for you to fetch your data. So as you can see here, I'm on my pages collection and I'm just going to copy the base URL. Let's paste this into Postman and do a simple get request. So I've got the base URL, I'm gonna add items slash pages and we'll fetch our data. So I can see I've got the example page here, number one, uh, but I don't see the other page. And that is because I have a custom permission set up for the pages collection. So I'll go into roles, we'll go to public and take a look at this permission setting. So the public role can only access pages where the status is equal to published. But maybe I have another use case where I want my website or my server to be able to access all of the pages. So what I can do, I'll open up the user directory and I'm going to create a static token to access the Directus API. It's also important to note here that it's not the token that gives the access, it's that we created a token for a user that has elevated or administrator permissions. So I'll generate this static token. I'm gonna to copy this and make sure I save it. And I'm gonna hop over into Postman and let's add that token to our authorization header. So we'll just use the bearer token type, add our token and hit send. Now, as you can see, I've got all of the pages. So I've got my page that's in draft, not just the one that is published. One of the great things about GraphQL is that you're only fetching the content that you need. That can reduce the size of the payload traveling over a network and increase your speed. But did you know that the Directus REST Base API can act GraphQL-like? Let me show you. So inside our query params, I'm just going to add a fields key. And for the value, I'm just going to enter the title of the fields that we want to pull from the API. So title, comma slug, comma image. And what do I get back from the API? just the data that I told it I want. The Directus REST API also allows you to fetch relational data. So in this example, if I want to use a wildcard, just a dot asterisk, to fetch all the related image data in a single call, I can do that no problem. So you can see all of that data here. You can also select the specific properties of the related data that you want. So if I am trying to do a author name for this page, I could do user created dot first name, user created dot last name. And as I scroll down, you could see we're fetching just the related data that I've asked for. Being able to select all the relational fields in, in the second level or third level or even fourth level using a wildcard is extremely helpful during debugging and development. But when you go to production, I would recommend only choosing the specific fields that you need so you can speed up your request. To learn more about the APIs and get a full reference, open up a new tab, go to docs.directus.io and just look for the API reference on the left-hand side. And that is it for this overview of Directus, the world's leading open data platform. If you are interested in learning more, or maybe you're ready to speed up your project development, you're ready to reduce that time to market, here's what I would recommend next. You can always learn more about Directus at directus.io, but you should be eager to jump in and create your free community cloud instance you can get started with our demo project for 100% free and get a good idea for how Directus works. Next, subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
we've got a ton of helpful tutorials and how-to videos on all the different modules and tools within Directus. And last, don't forget to subscribe to the newsletter so you can stay up to date with everything Directus. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in our community.